Hey there, I'm Tim Warner from CBT Nuggets. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget called What is a TCP Port? TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. It's a key component of the TCP IP protocol stack. As you probably already know, TCP is a connection-oriented protocol that requires a connection or a circuit between the source sending computer and the destination one. TCP is one of the two main ways to transmit data in a TCP IP network. UDP, which is a best effort connectionless protocol, is the other one. More generically though, a TCP port represents an application or service specific endpoint identifier. Now what do I mean by that? Well think of opening a web browser and you specify the hypertext transfer protocol. You type in cbtnuggets.com and boom you get the page. Well, CBT Nuggets web server, its HTTP server specifically, is listening for incoming connections on a particular port address. The well-known port for HTTP is 80. By contrast, you might download some software from ftp.microsoft.com. Their FTP server is going to be listening on the well-known port 23 and so forth. Depending upon your IT certification exam, you may need to have many of the most common TCP ports memorized. That's part of the picture. A TCP port is a 16-bit unsigned value, so there's a finite number of TCP ports available in the world, 65,535 to be exact. You know how we're moving from IPv4 to IPv6 due to address depletion? I predict that the time will come in which we'll have to expand the port range to accommodate additional services. That said, the first 1024 TCP ports are called well-known port numbers, and they're agreed upon among technologies technology vendors such that for instance if you and I were to go into business and sell a really nice FTP server client software we would agree to work with the standard well-known FTP port numbers. A socket in which you make a connection to another system that's running some TCP server software takes place with a combination of an IP address and a port number. That means a single host can host multiple instances of the same service by using different port numbers. For instance we can set up a web server that has site one listening on the default port of port 80 and another one that is to say another website on the same server same IP address but listening on a different port you see how that works so practically speaking where and how do we use port numbers well one thing as I said is during server application configuration enterprise applications like Oracle SQL Server SharePoint all require you to set up services on discrete port numbers and that brings in the notion of the firewall and working with your network administrator to allow for that traffic to flow on those port IDs. Service addressing is another way to use port numbers. Once we install our enterprise application, we advertise the service using, generally speaking, a host name and the port number unless it's well known. If it's well known, we can leave it off. We use port numbers for troubleshooting purposes. Specifically, we can troubleshoot malware and identify rogue processes. I'll show you that in our brief demo coming up. And finally, just again to revisit the importance firewall configuration often uses rules that denote both aspects of a socket you might create allowances or traffic blocks based on IP addresses port numbers or both you know regardless of your operating system you can always get to the netstat command line tool although the specific parameters you use will depend upon your OS in Windows we can fire up a command prompt type netstat a minus a the minus of course as opposed to the forward slash is a salute to this tool's Linux Unix roots to get a run of all current TCP connections on the system. Now you really can't do all that much just besides looking, quite honestly. If we do a netstat forward slash question mark, we get a run of all of the parameters. Now the reason I show this to you is that I would recommend you instead, at least you Windows folks, download tcpview.exe from the sysinternals.com domain. It's a Microsoft property now. It's developed by a really smart guy named Mark Rusinovich. He also has a command line version of this tool called TCPVCon, also free for your download. What's awesome about TCP View, and I'll stretch the screen a little bit to make it easier for you to see, is that it gives us a graphical interface. It's not stat on steroids really. You can see that I have a lot more running on my system in terms of remote connections than I might have otherwise been aware. That's why TCP View is an excellent way to diagnose 
rogue processes. It could be a Trojan horse, some sort of backdoor administrative application that phones home. You can easily identify those tools by taking a look. Now you see I've got quite a few applications running. Outlook has some processes going, several Chrome tabs in Google Chrome. When you right click one of these items you can get specific ID of the image or the executable program that's running and you can also end the process, terminate it from here. You can right click, choose close connection. You can right click a process and do a who is lookup. There's lots of neat things you can do here that I would encourage you to play with. But the bottom line here is that you see that for each process that I've got running on my system, you can see at a glance whether it's TCP or UDP, and you can also see the local and remote port. Now you notice that UDP doesn't have remote ports, that's because UDP is a connectionless protocol, doesn't require an end-to-end -end circuit like TCP does. TCP tells us here where we're connected, both locally as well as to a local, to a remote system I should say. There you have it, a quick nutshell introduction to TCP ports. You now know what TCP ports are and you know how they're managed practically. I hope that this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.